Hey, Ethan here, and I'm going to share a modification I came up with uh, in order to allow VGA takeoff of arcade machines. Uh, this is designed with MagFest in mind. Um, the goal here is to be able to take output from an arcade machine, send it to a projector or other LCD display while maintaining the video on the machine. Um, a huge concern is modification. I mean, it's not too big of a deal to do this, but trying to come up with a way that's easy to, to move the, the modification machine to machine um, and also so that if I perform it on my own machines that it is not permanent because I don't really want to cut up the harness. So here we have um, what is a, a standard Chinese video scaler. These things are, I think I picked this up through maybe eBay or one of the, the other arcade resellers. They're pretty common. It has a VGA in, VGA out. This chip here is a, a digital scaler. What it does is it, it captures the video coming in, scales up to VGA resolutions, pushes out of here. Um, the board is marked 5 to 12 volts. And down here there's actually a, a pin header and it comes with a, a cable for um, bringing in the CGA, that is 15 kilohertz video signal from an arcade machine. Or I guess, actually to be honest, it could do 21 and 31 as well, I'm sure. Sorry, 25. Killer VGA and 31 killers VGA. Um, so what I did is I ended up picking up uh, a couple of these fingerboards, which are meant for making wire harnesses for JAMA. So you have the JAMA, the pins here, and I think the original intentions of these boards is for uh, soldering wires up here for kind of making custom extensions and whatnot. That's not exactly my use. And here is the. Uh, a JAMA pin header. So what I ended up doing is dremeling off pretty much from the edge of these contacts to remove that piece of the board and then soldered straight from the pin connectors on the uh, the card edge connector straight down to the the pads on the board so pretty common not too uh, strange. From there um, tied into the the power leads and pulled off the video signals from that. So there's red, blue, green, ground, and then there's a sync signal. The board actually had two in it. I kind of moved it around. So um, what I'll do is, for the doc, for sake of documentation, uh, I got this backwards when I first built it, not the power, but uh, this is actually the, um, this side here would be the uh, solder side, not the component side of the board. And you can see it's got uh, the sync signals in green. And then on the component side, for the Neo Geo at least, red, blue, and ground, and then down here the power. I believe the power was shared on both sides, so not too big of a deal. So what this allows is plugging the JAMA harness into here, plugging this into the board so it kind of sits in between the factory harness and the board. You get the video takeoff, comes in the scaler, out comes the video. Um, I'm trying to think. So, I'll go ahead and throw this in real quick so we can see it run. So we're, here we have a Neo Geo cabinet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this down. So, actually, let me grab a KNC flashlight. So, here we've got our standard uh, JAMA harness connector here that would normally be on the board. What we'll do is we'll just go ahead and insert this. And here, I actually had to cut the key out. That key was not in the, uh, originally. Um, unfortunately, it's easy to find JAMA connectors. It's harder to find the actual pins that go, or the blocks that go in them that, uh, shun it off for the connector piece. So, from there, we, uh, just show that on. I actually set the camera down just for a split second so I can get this well. And... Boom, installed. So what I'm gonna do is set this board here. It's kind of weird that it has video in and out. I don't, I don't know what other applications you're kind of designed for. I know that you could um, maybe perhaps scaling up some of the the later VGA games into uh, larger flat panels. So we have our scaler hooked in now. So all plugged in. Game is powered on. We can see we have uh, power there. 
This one will go to the menus too much. Uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, so, first observation is that, as with any analog signals, oh my goodness, it's not booting. What the hell? Uh oh. Uh oh. Neo Geo, don't do this to me. Let's see. Wiggle our cartridge. Shake the board a bit. Come on. Woo! All right. It's all about wiggle on the cartridge. Yes, yeah. Don't, don't hate me. No, no, I really have a, a collection. Don't, 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 uh, no hate. I don't, it was, uh, uh, what's something that has a good, uh, intro? a game. So here we have a game coming up. Now, one thing that's uh, interesting about this is analog signal. <sighs> so the downside to actually uh, touching anything that works is the part where it doesn't. So This shouldn't be a result of our takeoff. This is probably more a result of flakiness with the cartridge. It's weird that the first brute loader came up. <sighs> Boom. Okay. So finally, we have some running. So. The board takes the analog signals from the the game, and unfortunately, uh, the downside of that is anytime you have uh, something splitting the analog signal, there's signal loss. So, in this case, the board has these bizarre potentiometers for adjusting brightness, and when you adjust, um, a lot of cases, I don't think these boards are normally being used where they're splitting the video. I think a lot of use cases, uh, people doing because I'm putting an LCD screen in a game instead of a CRT. So, this might be worse than normal, but there's this case where the, the adjustment screw, in one hand, you know, I think we're messing with, we're dropping blue right now, so, if the blue is over here, it's not on that screen. As you turn it up on one side or the other, it's probably because it's like a resistor, um, tied to ground or something. I, but I'll get into it, you know, maybe peel into that later. But So, unfortunately, you have to kind of accept a little bit of loss doing this. Um, it's possible to crank the fly back up or the, maybe the brightness on a monitor to compensate for it. So if I actually pull the header off here, you can see the brightness gained. Now it's split, so that's kind of a one downside to this. So... Um, Overall, though, I think for most competitions, I think it's definitely livable, and I haven't even I haven't even touched the the monitor adjustments to try to compensate for it on that side. And I did do it on the LCD, so that LCD screen is cranked all the way. Um, but like I said, my main uh, goal here was pretty much Magfest, and um, for games where there, there's giant competitions going on, NBA Jam is popular, Wind Jammers on Neo Geo is popular, uh, there, there's some other games. We had the Robotron contest, people going for the Guinness Book World Records. Now naturally, uh, classic games are not going to use a JAMA connector, so that, that kind of setup isn't going to work. And I'm going to go ahead and unplug the LCD screen and bump it over to one of the a different VJ output. And here we go. So this is still reversed for, uh, but this is a, a projection output. I'm gonna kill the lights real quick. Might oversaturate the, uh, the camera here, but uh, let's see. 
So this is reverse for rear projection, but this is uh, oh, doing pretty good. It's, it's definitely livable, and on the monitor side, we we're kind of sitting dark over here, um, darker than I'm used to. And black level, vertical position, horizontal versus nope. No immediate uh, adjustment for brightness on this particular monitor. So, but I think for compensation and stuff, this should suffice, and we can just crank the uh, the flyback up a bit on it. Uh, I will look into the circuit a little bit and see what's up with the the balance. If maybe it's some sort of pull down resistor that can just be removed. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, video scaler, Chinese. I want to say the scaler is about thirty bucks. Uh, it's probably like a hundred times faster than the actual arcade machine itself as far as computation power and the the card edge and um, the card edge connector and the JAMA fingerboard is probably about five dollars total there so pretty much solder and, and run and I think that it shouldn't be too difficult to build similar harnesses for some midway cabinets or or Williams cabinets or whatever's whatever's needed so that's pretty much it for this so thanks